everybody, welcome to our kitchens. I know Pete's in his and I'm in mine and it's the cheese festival and it's the best time of year and I look forward to it every single time. And uh, today I want to just build a little cheese board for you. And I've got a, a selection of cheeses and some fruit and some honey and some dessert wine. So um, I'm ready to rock and roll if you're ready to see what's on my board. Cool, well, welcome from Hout Bay, I must admit. It seems very, very weird. This must be, I think, the first time in, in what, 20 odd years, Jen, that we've not been doing something at the Cheese Festival. It does feel a little strange, although I feel better now that I'm surrounded by cheese and a glass of wine. But it does <laughs> feel strange that, uh, although we've, we've, been, we've been at the Cheese Festival in all its various connotations since it first started in a France trip. So it's not unusual that we're part of this unusual Cheese, trans this cheese Festival uh, transmission over lockdown. Yeah. So what have you? So what have you got there, Jen? Pete, you know, um, I, I'm I'm not really a sweet tooth kind of girl. Um, although I'm a sweet girl, let me tell you. But um, I I like cheese board to kind of double up as a dessert. Um. So I I've, I've got some I've yep. got some beautiful figs. You know, figs for, for the sweet element, but some beautiful grapes, they're big, fat and luscious and juicy, some pomegranate seeds, something a little bit biblical. But from a cheese point of view, I have got, because um, I like to have something that's like, I've got some stilton, because I love that sharp, strong in your face, although that's fruity and subtle, I love it. Um, I've got a piece of Huguenot. Um, Lovely. Oh, my mouth is already because it's just for me it's like umami you know it's just this lovely yummy yummy hard cheese i have a piece of dutch cheese and um, i've got um this is the amsterdam just for something soft and sweet and then i've got a, a, a really really robust cheddar but a nice biker a piece of cheddar there and then just two little mold cheeses one can there and um i have got a, a, a piece of brie and then some goat's cheese. I just think that the cheese board has to have a bit of goat's cheese on it. So yeah, that's what I've got. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I have some kind of like a biscotti, rusky, whatever, whatever, because couldn't find Melba toast. Um, and I just made some with a few raisins in it. I know a lot of people like to have nuts and dried fruit on their cheese board. So I thought, oh, let me just like the balance. Balance. Um, and just make like a little biscotti something. So that's what I have. Massive. I, I, when you say you like um, you like uh, uh, the cheese's dessert, I remember seeing a number of uh, demonstrations you've done over the years uh, with on um, the cheese festival. Those massive breeze with all those all the juice dripping down off of them, and those very sort of sensual brie and and, and canvas towers that you often used to make. Yeah. I think it's I think it's quite interesting actually when you when you talk about cheese's dessert and you look at how the French do it. The French. See it as a savory course that they have before dessert, and the English have it after dessert. I like it's actually interesting. The, the interesting thing about that is it's got is more to do with what they're drinking than with what they're eating. The yes. French have the, the 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 cheese course after after their main course before dessert, so they can carry on drinking red wine. Whereas the English prefer the sweeter wines, the ports and the dessert wines, so they prefer to drink that after dessert. So that's kind of that's the only real reason why you have it in two different spots is that the, the English see it more as the end of the meal, whereas the French see it as a continuation of the savory. I mean, I'm in two minds, to be honest. I, I like a little bit of sweetness on my board. Um, so I've always got a little bit, I've got like a little chunky tomato relish um, and mm. a nice tart Granny Smith apple. So I, I, I like a little bit of, but I, I think also the cheese is quite, I like quite strong in your face kind of cheeses. So I think sometimes you do need that kind of sweet foil to go with it. You need that balance, which I, I love the stuff when you say about the, about the figs and the dried fruit. I guess that's a perfect combination. I've also got some, it's like a little um, acha, jalapeno acha. I also like this beautiful, the, the mango acha, when you get the really nice ones with those green mangoes that are crunchy. And of course, I've just got some traditional little cornish on some little gherkins to relish. Um, from the actual cheeses, um, I like the strongest sort of cheese. So predominantly, I've got a, I've got here, I've got a a a, a, a Cremonat Gorgonzola, something from Johannesburg, nice and strong, but creamy sort of texture. Then I've got same as you, 
uh, Huguenot. I don't think any South African, self-respecting South African cheese board should be without a nice piece of Huguenot. It really is a beautiful, beautiful cheese from Dale. And then I've got something interesting, which is from, um, from Claimfield, which is the, um, they do that stunning Greer. But this ah. is called the Stanford. It's, a, it's actually a smoked cheese. And I'm sitting here, I can just smell the, smell the smoky waft and I can't wait to get it tucked in. And then I've got this English cheddar, which is a nice, this little wax number here. This is a Winston and it's an actual, it's actually imported from, from the UK. And it's, it's a nice 12 month old um, cheddar that, that should crumble quite nicely and give you that kind of, it's almost like it makes your tongue itchy. It's that, it's that old. Yeah. And then, and then I'm the same with the wine dress, the softer cheese, a little bit of camembert here. And then I've got two goats. I'm, I love what, what South African cheese maker are doing with, with goat's cheese these days. I think we have some stunning, stunning goat's cheese. I've got a standard um, Fairview log, but I've also got this kind of camembert-y, brie kind of vibe that's nice and soft and with a bit of luck, we'll do a bit of oozing. Oh, well, I just want to Sorry, I interrupted you there, Pete. No, 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 not at all. I'm just, I was just about to pour a little glass of wine since it's, it's cheese festival weekend and we'd be remiss not to tuck into a little something to go with our cheese. I'm actually just got a little, um, I've got a red muscadel here. 2012. Oh, so there we go. There we go. Cheers, cheers to our cheese festival viewers. I'm gonna, oh, well that is absolutely gorgeous. And it's not, it's not overly sweet, there's still a little bit of acidity to it. I think you gotta be careful sometimes with the dessert wines you use with the cheese that it's not, it's not that sickly syrupy sweet because that can be very heavy. This has got a nice little bit of acidity. Um, just with regards, Jen, you tell me, what is your feeling to, to do the, the, the there's always that kind of, do you have your cheese with biscuits or do you have your cheese with bread? Which do you prefer? You know what, I'm such a greedy child. Um, I Personally, um, I, I like to have it with bread. Um, and it's gotta be like a really good, crunchy on the outside, fluffy on the inside, lots of crust. And sometimes they even like pull out the inside and then mm. just with the, you know, the outside, as long as it's crispy and whatever. You know, if you're having a really heavy meal, then maybe just something like a bit of marble toast or a little water biscuit. Um, just, yeah. just as a vehicle, actually, to bring it to your mouth. <laughs> you know, I, I agree. I agree completely. I mean, but you need something that's got, a, that's got texture, something that Chris, I think, Melbourne toast is good. Again, there's another story that, sorry to bore people with details, there's another story that relates to the English and the French. And the French are where say that the reason that the French eat the cheese with bread and the English eat with biscuits is that the English don't know how to make bread. <laughs> you know what? I, I think you agree. <laughs> but, I, but I agree with you. I'm in the same camp as you. I prefer, I prefer a nice crusty slice of bread than, than biscuits. Ah. Biscuits are, you know, because they're one dimensional. You get, you get the texture from them and you get nothing else. It's just, it literally is just a vehicle for eating the cheese, oh, whereas at least the bread and the breaking of the bread and dipping it in, it's more tactile and, and, and certainly yes. there's more flavor to the bread than there to the biscuits, yes. I think. I love it, love it, love it. And I think sometimes people also complicate these days with the biscuits, you know, you've got, you've got biscuits that have got black pepper and sun-dried tomatoes and rosemary, I think. Sesame and you know, Yeah, you know, it's, 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 I think, you know, the, the hero of, of is the cheese. And you want, you want the delivery mechanism that adds to the cheese. I don't think you want flavored biscuits that are starting to detract from the cheese and fight with the cheese. I think, I think good, fresh bread, plain and simple. And again, if you're going to use biscuits, I think those, you know, the water biscuits, the plain, you know, no nonsense ones. I think the best way to go, they're the most, what's the word, universal, the, the kind of, they don't interfere with the cheese at all. Absolutely. The thing is, you, I agree with you, the, the, the cheese is very definitely the hero. And um, all those flavoured biscuits are fine. Use them in a dip, you know. Um, use them in a dip. I have a delivery arriving. Sorry, that's the date. Um, yeah. So, yeah, Pete, I, um, I like a little bit of honey as well. I've got some honey um, stacked yeah. around the side, but that will just be like with the figs. And I don't know, would, would I use it with the Huguenot or would I use it with the Stilton? 
Um, or would I just use it with Fred and the Cameron bag? Because it's such a yeah. soft company and the brief, just so soft, you know? Yeah. You know, the other thing I was thinking of that, that works quite nicely with cheese, I've never heard of a cheese board in the UK, is uh, little um, uh, bits of celery, little celery sticks. That yes. kind of nice cleanliness, that kind of watery, yes. clean, almost palate cleansing uh, taste you get from some celery. It's great when you're moving, especially when you start to get stronger and stronger. I remember I went for a magnificent meal at um, the Gavroche in, in Mayfair, um, Michelle Rue uh, Jr.'s restaurant. And at the end of this massive meal, this, this French waiter came up with this cheese trolley that must have had about 50 different cheeses on. I mean, it was the most glorious thing I've ever seen. And I kind of went, he said, well, I said, look, I'll be honest with you. I don't really know much about French cheese. I said, I'm guided by you. You tell me what I should try. So I said, he said, well, how many cheeses would you like? I said, oh, I don't know, four. And he gave me this great look of disdain, like I was some kind of Philistine. He said, I think Michelle will start you with 12. I went, okay. And then he produced this amazing cheese board and it was literally these cheeses were, it was a brown plate, were literally placed at, from, you know, sort of at 12 o'clock on the, on the, 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 the like, a, like on, a, on a watch or a clock. And he said, right, yeah. you start here and it's creepy and it's mild. You work all your way around up to 12 o'clock where you had this, Sure, this stinky cheese that was, that it smelled worse than it tasted. It was absolutely delightful when you actually got it in your mouth. It was just so rich, but the smell was quite overpowering. And I think that's also you've got to be careful of when you're eating your cheese board, that you start with a, with a wine brush, the softer oh. cheese, and work your way up. But once you've had a nice, powerful gorgonzola, now you and I both like a nice blue vein. Um, okay. Is it, 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 it tends to kill the camembert. The camembert just doesn't taste of anything afterwards. I think you kind of, You've got to progress your way around from the milder wow. cheese up to the big, the big bad boys. Absolutely. What is that? It's the barrel, am I right? Stinking. Yes. Stinking bishop. Yeah. As well. Stinky on the nose, yeah. but delicious on the palate. So I, I yeah. say don't be put off by the smell of the cheese. You know, just delve yeah. and dive in. Mm. And I've also liked that, that kind of English vibe with, with a traditional stilton with that long, almost sort of, looks like an enlarged toilet roll. Yes. And they, they, they take a bit out and they pour port in. Port, I yes. I like that. I thought that's always incredibly civilized where you're spooning out this beautiful creamy blue cheese and, and lots of port. I've always thought, I've always liked that idea. I love that idea. And it just soaks into, it's absolutely delicious. What I was looking for to add to this was a, a piece of drunken pecorino. Oh, yes, that, that would be nice. Huh? I've got some really nice drunken pecorino. I couldn't find it uh, because that's yeah, actually, I haven't seen it for a while. Yeah, you know, the, the porch in the, in that's the that sauce. beautiful one with the, with, the, with the purple rind they, that they soak in the, in the red wine, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. So, uh, where do we go from here? Do we tuck in? Do we? I, mean, I could really dive into your cheese board. I have to say something. Um, it looks absolutely gorgeous. And um, I'm thinking of Kalman's lunch. Mm. Pickled onions. Oh, yeah. Yeah? What would you put on that? What would you put on that board? If you're eating, I'm going to eat. <laughs> I'm going to eat. And I think I think there, those palmer lunches, those strong pickles like the pickled onions, like the gherkins, yes. are meant for the stronger cheeses. You know the the mature cheddars and um, and the stronger blue cheeses. I think mm -hmm. I think um, you've got to be careful. I, I mean, I love pickled onion. Oh, I love pickled onions and Branson, mm -hmm. the Branson pickle. And I think the sweetness works nicely with the with the softer cheeses. But as soon as you get to you need something really quite pokey and quite um, stringent, stringent when you start getting to the, the, the more serious, matured, hard, hard cheeses. Although I quite like, I've got here on my table, I quite like a nice, firm Granny Smith apple. A slice of that really gives a nice, again, a, a freshness to your, to, to your palate when you're, when you're eating lots of cheese. I love it. Yeah. You know what? I've just I've taken a little bite out of my... Um, a very, very mature biker. And what I love about that, it's creamy. You know, it coats the palate and it's got the little salt crystals in it. And I absolutely yeah. adore that. And, you know, 
chase it with the grape ball or just a little sip of some dessert wine. I have got here a muscadel. It's a, a, a rit ballet, um, red muscadel. And um, it's a 2008. So this will be finished this year because it, I don't think I can keep it much longer, but we've been kind of sipping it, you know, throughout the years. And I'm very yeah. interested to see how this one has kept, you know, have we let it lie properly, what, you know, how, but normally the sweet ones do last a lot longer, am I right? Yeah. It's the so. sugar content that, pre that preserves them. You know, it's like, it's like chutneys and pickles. It's yes. that sugar is a preserving agent. So the sweeter wines will always be more stable and last for longer. Mm -hmm. They're less likely to oxidize. And plus Absolutely. also these have got, this is, it's fortified as well. So it's got added alcohol to it. So Absolutely. that will help to preserve it. So, I mean, I have the same thing. I've had this bottle of 2012 and I've had it open for, a, oh, two days or so. No, it's been open for a while. Yes. Um, but it does, they, they hold really, really well. I think that's the beauty of it. If you don't have to, like a, a bottle of wine, when you're going to open it, you've pretty much got to drink it within a couple of days, or at least with Muscatel. A little glass here and there, it's, it's, it works a treat. Winter's coming, darling. But Peter, um, how do you feel about a, like with a really nice soft um, brie, a wheel of brie, and um, it's so soft, it's, it's just really, it's like a water bed, you know, that it's sort of moving. And when you open it, it oozes. Yeah. No ammonia, none of that manky stuff, with a bit of bubbly. Slightly sweet bubbly with maybe a brie, or? Yeah, no, look, I agree, I agree with that. I think those, those, those soft cheeses, you kind of, they, they look like they're, they're about to burst if you touch them. You know, yes. and once you get into it, the, the, only, the only downside to that is I think you probably, you've got to, once you tuck into it, you've got to eat it. Yes. Because you, you can't really, you can't really scoop it back into its skin once it's that right, you know. So no. when you've got a, a cheese that's that good, you've kind of got to, okay, well, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna polish this off in one sitting, otherwise you're going to lose it, I think. Absolutely. Crusty bread. Right, brie. What better yeah. could you ask for? Well, it's, it's a meal in itself. You know, that's, when, when, when you're talking a meal like that, that, is, that's, that can be lunch in itself. It doesn't even have to be a course of a, of, 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 of a dinner. That is lunch. You know, I'll Absolutely. take that as lunch any day of the week. You know? But you know what? Fact, it's um, certainly going to be lunch today. It's certainly going to be lunch today, I think, um, once, we, oh, once we've signed off from this uh, cheese ball thing that I'm going to spend the rest of the afternoon slowly nibbling my way around this board and then have a bit of snooze once I finish putting mask up. A Dutch neighbor. Yeah. And our houses are so close. I could just like stick it on a Dick Whittington stick and just pass it across to his balcony. There'll be that social oh, wow. distancing. <laughs> and he'll be Perfect. very happy. Oh. Yeah. And what is that? That's the Amsterdam that you've got, huh? Oh. It's a nice mature one. I mean, it's delicious. I'm just tasting this Stamford, this smoked, this smoked cheese from 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 uh, from from Claymont. You know, it's the same sort of texture as the Huguenot. It's got that. It's not quite hard, hard. It's sort of semi-hard. It crumbles up in your mouth, but there's a there's a creaminess to it, and it just the smokiness is so beautiful. I'm just gonna have a little spoon of my tomato chunky tomato chutney on it. Oh, yeah. mm. oh. Well, I can tell you, my skeleton is creamy and savory and just making my mouth very, very happy. That is absolute heaven. I, I have to say the combination of the, and the, of the this sort of sweet and tangy tomato chutney and this beautifully rich, smoky Stanford cheese. I'm going to get a little crusty bread on this and you're gonna excuse me audience well I, I just pop this in my mouth because i cannot resist it it's absolutely but gorgeous yes. but you know that smoked cheese <laughs> would work very well with your apple good call i think it'll work beautifully with the apple mm. Spot on, Jim. Good call. Very good call. Oh. Nice one, huh? Yo, oh, that is magnificent. Yo. I must admit, I say this every year. 
And so again, back to our, our in, involvement with the cheese festival over the last 20 odd years is that it's amazing how, how far South African cheeses have come. You know, oh, I remember a day, I can still remember a time when, you know, you've got cheddar and sweet milk, you know, which yeah. was gouda and that was it. And if you were lucky, you knew someone who might have access to some blue cheese and Roquefort somewhere. Yeah. Um, and woe betide someone came across a camembert, you know. And now, I mean, if you look at we look at the judging we've been doing for the national dairy championship, I mean, there was about four hundred different cheeses on offer, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and I, so I think we've, we've come into our own South Africans as as stunning, stunning cheesemakers. You know, I can't remember, with the exception of maybe Parmesan Reggiano, the last time that I really felt the need to buy a foreign cheese. I mean, okay, I say that I've got an English cheddar here, but I just wanted to, to do it by, by way of contrast. But they're just, I mean, when we do at the restaurants, we don't have any foreign cheeses on our board. We only use South African cheese, and we've got the full gambit of flavors, of textures, without the need to, to, to go foreign. Whereas there was a time where, where you would never see any South African cheese on a cheese board. Now, the, the, the competition winners, they're, they're absolutely stunning and stand on their own. I have to say, I couldn't agree with you more. And everybody you speak to, um, when you mention the Cheese Festival, especially you know when they've been visiting the festival as long as we have, they start as children, let me tell you, or as teenagers and into their adulthood. And the most exciting thing, besides the entertainment and the wonderful things that you can eat and the wonderful they are, um, it's the discovery discovery of all these beautiful little cheese makers yeah. you know that were with these incredible i mean i can remember when dale Wood started producing brie and camembert it was just the most exciting moment of my life you know um and yeah. then with the huguenot that's where i discovered the huguenot was at the cheese festival so it's a treasure yeah. trip, you know of, of special as you say cheese and the flavors and textures and um, yeah. It's wonderful. And I'm sad this year that because of this virus and 20 years, I mean, yeah. 20 years, that's going to say something to you. But you know what? Next year yeah. is going to be 21, and that's a big birthday. That's it. Um, no, look, I agree. I think, I think so. I mean, I remember a couple of years back, they asked me to do a, dem- a demonstration on goat cheese, on cheese, goat cheese. That's going to be limiting. And then there was this. <laughs> Box delivered of about 15 or 16 different producers with different types of everything from goat's brie to feta to you name it all. Wow, you know, where do I even begin to start talking about this and just 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 goat's cheese alone? So yeah, and I agree. I think I think I've loved the festival. I think it's 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 one of the best festivals, largely also because people too many festivals you go and have a poke around and try some samples and you go home because there's nothing else to do. I yes. love the cheese festival because of its family atmosphere. You can go spend the day there. You can buy us off a whole mm-hmm. cheese board and sit with friends and listen to great music and open the bottle of wine. So I think Absolutely. I think we should try and replicate that as much as we can with lockdown and sit around the table with loved ones, open up a bottle of whatever it is that you drink. Yeah. It doesn't have to be alcoholic. And I think breaking bread and cheese is one of those things for me that it's that is the, the true conviviality of the table. It's not. It's not fiddly, finding dining, turns and dribbles. It's about breaking bread and, and slithers of this and spoons of that and passing things on the table. I think cheese very much is that kind of communal eating. I would definitely agree with you. The more rustic, the better. The more yeah. rustic, the better. And uh, there's still cheese in the supermarket. I have to say, besides the cheddar and the garda, people haven't stockpiled on the other stuff. Um, the people that do know what's good, some of that stuff has disappeared, but there is enough on the shelves to put your own cheese board together. And I think maybe what we should do is, Pete, let's challenge people to, you know, put a little cheese board together, take a photograph of it, and um, I'm Jenny Morris, chef, and you are? I'm, uh, well, uh, send it to me via, via Facebook is the best one, is uh, yes. Pete Goff with SA. There you go. And Jenny Morris Chef, and show us pictures of your cheese board. What about it? And the SA Cheese Festival. Tag them yeah. in on it as well. I'm sure they'd love to know what you're doing. I think it's a brilliant idea. And I think, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm trying not to get out that much, but when I have been to the shops, 
some of the cooking cheeses seem to be getting used up quite quickly, but but there certainly is tons of cheese out there for people to try. I don't think it's a it's scarce at all. I've just tried this creamy cheddar. This is oh, my mouth is starting to itch. This is so well matured. I'm I'm gonna just sit here all afternoon and polish off this entire cheese board because um, <laughs> I feel well. I've got nothing else to do. Um, you know, it's locked down on end of week four, and from our president. Um, news that we're going to be leveling out on, uh, over the next couple of however no longer you know going these new levels we're going to be locked down for a while still so what I'm going I nowhere so I'm going to hang around and polish off this cheese what can I tell you absolutely well I just hope that this yeah this lockdown doesn't last forever and I just hope that they start phasing quickly uh, everybody must stay safe keep safe keep yourself safe for each other and uh, please God that our industry beats the hotels, the restaurants, that we can survive this. Well, I, in all honesty, I think we're not going to be back in business till July, maybe end of July, if we're lucky, where things are going. But I, I agree with you. I think, I think I know everyone is sick and tired of just staying at home. It's been four weeks. But the longer we do so, the, the, I mean, I saw a fantastic video today of, from the World Health Organization and they singled out South Africa as one of the most forward-thinking and progressive in terms of how they have attacked the virus and the, the, looking at the stats and, and the, the, the kind of build-up of the, of the health facilities that South African, the, the South African government has done because of the draconian measures that we put in place. So I think our government knows exactly what they're doing, and I think we should listen to them and believe them. You know, it's not about... It's, a, you know, the, the longer we stay locked down, the longer we stay safe, the better chance we have of saving lives. You know, uh, there are people out there who have it far worse than we do. You know, we're at home in a nice apartment or a nice house. We have our family around us. We've got internet. We've got cheese. Yes. You know, we have nothing to complain about. We really need to listen and heed the call to stay indoors for as long as is required of us. Absolutely. Well, my love, and while you munch away on your cheese board, I'm certainly going to be working my way through mine. Well, I think James. I'll it. This is a bit too much just for me. But cheers, Pete, and here's yes, to the Cheese Festival in 2021. Fantastic. Cheers. Cheers, everybody.